Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Arpit Shah and today I'm going to talk about sorted hashes and how to generate sorted hashes using Java. So let's get started. So let me start by explaining to you what is a hash function or it is also known as one way hash function, message digest or fingerprint function. So hash function is a mathematical function which takes variable length string as an input and it outputs fixed length binary data. It is called one way hash function because once the input is converted into fixed length binary data, then it is really hard to reverse that process and work out what was the actual input. To give you an example, I have shown a table below with two string and their generated hashes. In this example, I have used MD5 hash algorithm. So it will output 16 byte long fixed data. So hello world and goodbye strings have two 16 unique bytes of hash generated which then uniquely identifies them. So that's why sometimes hashes are also known as a fingerprints of the actual data. So the expectation from a good hash function is to not produce two identical hashes for two unique input strings. So to give you an example, if hello world and goodbye manage to produce identical hashes using MD5 algorithm, then that is considered as a hash collision. And if you find frequent hash collisions occurring using any particular algorithm, then that algorithm is not any more reliable. Another expectation from a good hash function is that even slight change in the input string should cause hash output to change drastically. And this is known as avalanche effect. So for example, if you look at the test01 and test02 strings hash outputs, they are quite different from each other. So anyone having knowledge of test01 MD5 hash, they cannot predict what would be the hash output for test02 data. There are many hash algorithms available in market and in current use. I have only listed a few common ones, which is MD5, SHA1, SHA256, SHA384, and SHA512. Input block size tells you that if you provide a big chunk of data, then how algorithm chunks it into the block size specified and then performs the algorithm on top of those blocks. Message limit tells you what is the maximum uh, bits limit that algorithm can use. And if you provide any more data than the provided limit, then the algorithm output will be weak. That means people can try and reverse engineer what was the input. So for MD5 and SHA256, it is 2 raised to 64 bits limit. And hash code size tells you the output bits. So for MD5, it outputs hash as 128 bits, which is 16 bytes. And SHA256 will output 256 bits output, which is uh, 32 bytes. So let me show you how to generate hash of uh, any string data using Java security classes. So let's first define our requirement. So we have some string data, which is, let's say in our case, it will be string hello world. It could be a big file in a string format. Um, we also want hash algorithm, which is SHA256 so let's define that and we need a method which says generate hash and it takes our data and the algorithm as input so let's generate that method um, it will be a static method so we need a message digest uh, instance which is actually of java security classes so let's create an instance of message digest name it digest for now and uh, we need to get a static instance of message digest so let's call it get instance and it takes algorithm as an argument it may throw exception so allow throwing exception here and uh, the first thing you should do is reset the digest because if you have any uninitialized uh, components then these will reset everything once that is done we need to call the function which is called digest 
and in our case we need to generate digest of the input data uh, we would use our data as an argument and because it's in a byte format we will just say data dot get bytes so now we have digest which has output in a byte format so byte array and that's our hash now the hash output would be in a byte array format but to print it we would need a string format so let's convert these byte data into hex string so we can see what came out so i already have written the function which does that so i'm just going to copy paste that function for now which basically converts byte to hex string so if i use that function and pass our hash as an input it will return the string which is our hex string of the hashes so let's return the string as an output and uh, let's print it out on the screen so we will say this is sha 256 hash so let's execute this code and see what happens so as you can see that now we have SHA-256 hash of hello world string. So SHA-256 as per spec it outputs always 32 bytes uh, hash data. If we do the same thing for let's say MD5 and then you will see it will be 16 bytes only. So let's run that code and you can see the hash is actually only md5 which is 16 bytes so there you go uh, generating hash using java security code is very simple so i just showed you the code of how to generate hashes using java security classes but i haven't talked about salt at all so what is a salt and what is the difference between hash and salted hash so let's understand salt first so salt is a random data that is used as an additional input to one way hash function. So the primary use for salt is to defend against dictionary attack or pre-computed rainbow table attack. So what do I mean by that? So dictionary attack is where attacker tries each keyword from dictionary one by one as your password. So if your password is from one of those keywords, eventually your account will be compromised. Rambo table attack is where attacker has a pre-computed table for reverse engineering cryptographic hash functions. So if your hash falls into any of these category, they know how to reverse engineer those hashes and then get password in a clear text. Um, so this is how attacker compromise very first user and then they can compromise other users depend based on that. Uh, how does the salt help against that? So let me explain that to you with an example. Let's say we are a big company like uh, Google and Facebook. That means we have requirement of storing username and password for millions of our users. So how do the big company store username and passwords? Now if they store username and password in clear, if their database is compromised, they are in a big trouble because then they are putting all the users at the security risk. So the way they do it is instead of storing password in clear, they actually store the hash of the password. And when user would like to log in, they can always recalculate the hash and compare it against their table to validate that that user is valid user now there is one problem with this methodology so as long as none of your user and passwords are compromised these uh, process will work but what if one of the user is compromised then this system have his loophole so let me explain to you how so let's say michael has used a common password so when i say common password there are always very standard passwords out there which people like to use like password one password one two three one two three four five six seven eight 
and so on so when michael is using a standard password and his password is compromised then the person who has stolen our database can see the hash of that password so that means that he can look for the identical hash so here as you can see that michael mike v and maria they all three have same hash so the person would know that not only michael has been using password 123 mike v and maria are also using password 123 so basically by compromising one user we managed to compromise more user with the same password so how do we get around this weakness and make our system even stronger so this is where the salted hash comes into the story so what happens in salted hash that when we calculate the hash from the password string we actually append the salt which is generally the randomly generated number and then calculate the hash of password so even though the password is same in example here password 123 is used by three different user but the salt calculated for each of those user is random and unique so then the hash output would also be unique so even though one of the password is compromised no one can guess that other user may be using the similar password so that is the advantage of salt and when it comes to storing uh, data into database users generally store only username the salt value and the hash because having these three information you still cannot work out what may have been the password so let me show you in our existing code how we can add uh, salt so from message digest uh, point of view adding salt is as simple as just exercising one more function which says update and then we need to just put salt data here so that means we need to now also pass the salt data as part of an argument so if we pass salt then before calculating hash the digest would update itself with that salt and then calculate the hash so the output hash would be different depending on the salt provided so now in this function we need to provide the salt here and that means we need to have a way to calculate the salt so let's create another method saying create salt and uh, create salt will be a, st a static method so let's create public static and it returns byte array create salt so in java if you would like to create a random number you can use any random generator class but it's preferable that you use secure random which is uh, actually true random numbers so first of all you need to decide how many bytes of random gen number you would like to generate uh, so let's say in our case we would like to generate um, byte array and uh, it will be let's say 20 bytes right in example I have shown you only 5 bytes but you can make it as many bytes as you like then we need uh, object of a secure random so let's call class secure random and this will be an object called secure random and then what we can do is we can just use this method called next byte and pass our empty byte array so it will fill that byte array with those random numbers and then we can return these random uh, these bytes which is now random 20 bytes so anyone who uses this function would every time get completely new random 20 bytes and these bytes will be then used as a salt which then will be used before calculating the hash 
and then our hash will be unique every time so if I use hello world and if I run it once you will see that it is starting with 0, 05 something if I run it again it will be different salt so it's now 14 D something if I run it again it will be something different again so as you see this is how salt makes the output very unique a uh, very important part in using salt is do not forget what salt you used so make sure you store it otherwise you will never be able to work out your own password later on so this is how you generate salted hash if you would like to keep eye on my upcoming videos then please do not forget to subscribe until then have a good time see you later